Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. And in today's video, I'm gonna to chat to you about what is in my travel camera bag. All right, so the first thing that I should talk about is the bag itself. And it's this think tank bag that I've got. It's the Urban Approach 15 mirrorless camera bag. And it's great for everything that I need. Um, the durability of it's been fantastic. It's very strong, like these um, these straps on the top, they're absolutely no in no danger of coming out or breaking, which I have had issues with in the past with these sort of breaking off over time with the weight of the bag. And yeah, just looking inside it, as you can see, all the sort of uh, space that you would need for putting all your cameras, lenses, other bits and bobs in there. And you've also got some extra pockets there just for zip pockets for little bits and bobs I usually put like things that I don't that you know can sort of fall, fall about all over the place like um, batteries and SD card folders and wires they all usually go in there and the last thing which this so this bit here is probably more designed for your laptop to sort of slip into the little sleeve but I'm actually using it to put in the Weebless gimbal at the moment which is working absolutely fine because that gimbal was so tiny, which I'm going to talk about. But yeah, that sort of just slides in there. And yeah, the other little things is just the little couple holders on the sides, which you can easily fit like a little tripod in there, like a Joby Gorilla Pod or something if you wanted to. And on the other side, I'd probably just have like a water bottle or something. All right, so the camera that I'm currently using, as you all may know, is the Sony a7 III. Really popular camera, loads of detail reviews out there already on this camera and um, yeah, just a quick overview, there's 4K up to 30 frames per second, you got 1080p high frame rates up to 120 frames per second and it's full frame, custom uh, picture profiles and obviously for uh, travel it's really small, light, compact and in a mirrorless body so pretty much it ticks all the boxes when it comes to being light for travel also has great autofocus and video which is quite important for me when it comes to travel shooting it also has a built-in time-lapse mode as well so it's something i didn't have in the beginning when it first came out but due to firmware updates it now has that inbuilt into it i'm it could this could actually be even smaller but i'm actually using a small rig cage as you can see on there um, so I'm using that just for uh, a little bit of extra protection and a little bit of extra weight when it comes to balancing on the gimbal so it just is not too light. So another big benefit is the file sizes, they're manageable, not too crazy big. Uh, as well as that, dual SD card slots that actually you can record video onto simultaneously which is fantastic as well just for shooting things that you might not get a chance to shoot again. Um, you can shoot on two cards and you've got that extra peace of mind when you're actually out there shooting. And the last massive, massive benefit of this compared to other Sony mirrorless cameras that came before it is the battery life. So the batteries that it uses is these uh, new improved uh, NPFZ100 batteries. So they're much bigger than previous cameras such as the Sony A7S II which was my camera before this, which I still have actually that camera, but I'm not taking it for traveling. Um, so yeah, these batteries, like I could use pretty much one battery for a whole day's shooting on a travel shoot. Um, obviously I've got two with me all the time, but generally when I'm just shooting little bits here and there on a travel video, um, yeah, one battery is good for like a whole day. So that's pretty sick. Uh, one other thing I just wanted to mention about this camera is um, a lot of people sort of complain about the, uh, the menus systems within the Sony cameras, which are horrendous, I'm not gonna lie. So, um, but the good thing that it does have is it has all these buttons everywhere on the camera that you can actually customize. So over time, you can just have pretty much a, a quick button to any any mode that you want or any specific, any specific thing that you wanna change very quickly on the camera, such as your focus mode, your white balance, your, um, whatever it might be, even frame rates and stuff, you can like literally have buttons that will allow you to quickly change into that. And um, yeah, speed is very important when it comes to shooting while you're traveling because you're not always in one spot for a long time. And um, yeah, just being able to switch in and out from say 4K 25p to 1080p 100 frames per second, like really quickly, then obviously that gives you more flexibility with the shots that you can get. That's all I'm going to say on this camera and I'm still really liking it. So the other camera that I have is the GoPro Hero 7 and 
I'm not really using it that much. I'm using it quite sparingly. It's pretty much just only for when I do underwater shots. So I've got a headband attachment as well, which I just stick on my head. And when I'm going for a swim, I'll just have this with me, just because you never know what you're going to catch under the water. And yeah, that's a great little camera to have just for underwater stuff. I don't really use it for anything else. So the lenses that I use for traveling, I've got the Tamron 2875mm f2.8 lens. I've spoken about this lens before, but I'll just quickly go over it again. Um, the reason why I love it, obviously, is 2875 is a really good zoom range, and also with the Sony APS-C button that I can quickly access on my camera, it kind of gives me a range all the way up to about 112 millimeters, so you get quite telephoto, and then you can go all the way down to 28, and you've got a constant aperture of 2.8 all the way through the lens, and just with the fact that it's so light and fairly small for considering what you're getting with it, it's like, really ideal travel lens I think um, I'm still really 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 loving it and yeah so I've had it for like over two years now or coming up to two years sorry and I'm still not thinking about changing it at all it's still my most used lens um, when it comes to doing gimbal work and handheld and yeah just an all-round great workhorse of a lens I really really can't recommend it enough so the next most used lens is another lens that I've talked about and I've actually done a review on as well on the channel if you want to check that out I'll leave a link below to that um, more in-depth review but it's the Tamron 1728 which is the newest lens that I've bought and I pretty much knew that I was going to get this lens straight away because I really like this one everything about it this has just been pretty much exactly the same but just at a uh, wider focal length so 1728 and yeah, just for all my wide establishing shots, time lapses, um, hyperlapses, I'm using this pretty much mainly for that. And um, I don't really vlog or anything, but you know, obviously if you did vlog, it would be a great lens for vlogging. And again, same 2.8 constant aperture all the way through, 17 to 28 millimeters, very small and light and compact. So it just kind of ticks all the boxes when it comes to having it in your travel bag. So next up is the gimbal, and the gimbal that I'm using currently for travel is this uh, Zhiyun Weebill S. So in terms of the size, portability, motor strength, and the price, I think you can't really get better than this at the moment when it comes to having a gimbal for travel. The other gimbal that I do own and I use a lot of my um, pro professional shoots is the Zhiyun Crane 2 which I still absolutely love just because I've got so used to that gimbal that it literally feels like just an extension of my arm um, but it's just a little bit too big for traveling around and fitting in travel size backpacks so that's where this one is like absolutely perfect because this fits in really really easily and um, it has a great payload obviously it carries all my lenses and camera combinations absolutely fine because the motor strength is fantastic and also some other benefits to this is things like the inverted mode like the low mode that you can go into um, very quickly just by unhooking this little uh, quick release system so that's a good little nice benefit that I like. Um, just like all the Zion gimbals really, the battery life's fine, it works absolutely fine. I've never actually had any issues with battery running out on these gimbals. Really happy with it overall. So next when it comes to audio is um, the Rode VideoMic Pro, which I've had for absolutely ages now. I know they've done a better, more updated version of this, which is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Um, which is great because that one actually just switches on with your camera whereas this one you actually need to switch on this one you actually need to switch on separate to your camera so that's quite important to remember if you don't do that then you actually won't be recording any audio so yeah I've kind of got used to doing that anyway so that's fine um, this one's actually a little bit smaller as well than the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus I think that one's quite a bit bigger and bulkier um, I don't always use this to be honest um, I'm finding myself using it less and less when it comes to travel just because I, I want to be a bit more inconspicuous and having this on top of the camera it just um, it just gives it a bit more it just gives it a bit more of the feeling like okay yeah I'm videoing something and you know it's a lot more obvious and it stands out um, I'm sure if you're a travel videographer you know what I'm talking about if I'm in an area where I don't care and I know that you know I'm, I'm fine to be shooting there and then no one's going to stop me then it's all good then yeah I'll have it on because I want to be getting some good stereo um, surround sound audio but if I'm in a place where I'm not sure um, I'll kind of just have it like this and just with, make sure that I have the, the inbuilt uh, mic level to, to the right level that it should be and I'll just make sure that I'm recording audio through 
the camera itself, which is good enough as well. And yeah, when it comes to travel videos, a lot of the audio that I do put in, a lot of the sound and sound design does come in in post, but it is great to have audio from, um, from the actual location as well because in some places you, you get some like really uni unique audio sound bites when you go to certain places that you, you do want to make sure you're capturing it's very important so yeah like I said try and use this as much as I can but I am finding myself using it less and less and using the just the inbuilt preamps of the camera more these days so ND filter using this Polar Pro 67 millimeter variable ND filter which is a six to nine stop variable ND filter there's also a two to five stop variable ND filter I believe as well and I was having a little bit of difficulty in deciding which one I wanted to get because these Polar Pro ones as much as they are like really really great quality and probably at top of the consumer pro prosumer line of ND filters they are very pricey and um, I just wanted to make sure I only got one so I had to think about which one I would probably need to use the most and when it comes to traveling generally I am going to places that have good sunny weather climates and bright light outside so I mean if I am ever going to need to use an ND filter it will be in those conditions so I went for the six to nine stop and if there's ever situations where it's too dark uh, to use that then I would just bump up the shutter but usually I'm not bumping up the shutter anyway more than let's say 1 over 200 so it's not crazy noticeably different and yeah just ND filter that works great that's just what, something that you want to have so another thing that I keep in my bag is this uh, intervalometer so for time lapses and hyperlapses I use this actually not really necessary because now the with the firmware updates of the Sony a7 III you actually have um, time lapse app feature within that camera now which we didn't have in the beginning so I was using this and I've just got used to using this so much that I just still like using it I just plug it straight in and I know like within two seconds like da -da -da, like I've got my my settings ready um, which I just find it I'm finding that it's quicker to use it than using the time-lapse app but maybe over time I might phase out using this because one less thing to carry but even in saying that it's really small and light so it just kind of fits in without you even worrying about it and it takes two of these little uh, AAA batteries which actually the batteries for me they never seem to run out when it comes to this so it's actually not a hassle at all to have it and it's actually really cheap so yeah just keeping it with me but you know if there's ever times where the battery does run out or I just forget to bring it with me then I do have the safety of having the time-lapse app within the Sony a7 III but yeah that's just another thing that I have with me so another thing that's not really exciting at all to talk about but it's quite important to have is just this like lens cleaning kit that I've got um, yeah won't speak too much about this but basically it's like a Zeiss cleaning kit yeah you just got everything that you need you got the lens blower da -da -da, you got the cleaning cloth and you've got the cleaning fluid for high quality optics yeah yeah you've got this lens cleaning solution there and the last thing that you've got is just this little brush so yeah everything that you everything you would need to, to you, you just want to make sure you have something like this as well like all the time because it's really frustrating when um, your lenses get dirty and you've got nothing to clean it with other than like your sleeve or like a tissue which is quite dangerous to be using um, on your expensive lenses so just make sure you invest in a good little cleaning kit that you just have with you all the time just so that you make sure that your lenses are clean from any smudges or dirt that could uh, mess up your image so the power bank that I use is this RAV Power one which is fantastic it's fairly slim and portable as you can see it's uh, packs a lot of power in there it's 26,800 milliamp hours portable charger and you've got so you've got these two USB outputs you've got a USB type C and you've got a micro USB as well so it's got pretty much everything that you need and yeah one of these charges can you know last you a good two or three days when it comes to what I use it for which is charging my phone and also my camera sometimes when I'm out and about and say I am getting down to say 20-30% on the camera um, yeah I can just charge through the um, 
USB Type-C adapter straight into there and it charges it up pretty quickly. So yeah, being able to charge my camera and my phone, that's pretty much all I need it for. So the next thing I have in my bag is this WD My Passport wireless SSD, which basically just means I've got a solution whereby I can literally just put my my SD card straight into there, press one button and it will start to back up my SSD. It will start to back up my footage straight onto the SSD, which is a one terabyte SSD and it's really rugged and you know it's a light portable thing to just have in the bag and I prefer to use this over having my laptop and hard drive with me everywhere that I go. Um, it's a much smaller, safer, rugged solution. If I was going away for somewhere for something like maybe two weeks plus then I probably would take my laptop and hard drive with me just because I want something anyway just to be able to watch something online with or whatever but if I'm going away for a few days or a week up to a week for example this is great to have because I know that generally I'll just be shooting constantly and um, I won't have that much time to be able to edit or check through footage so I'm just using this to dump footage straight onto as quick as possible and then moving on and yeah, it's just a smaller solution, lighter solution to the, having my laptop and hard drive with me. And I'm yeah, really loving it, it's a great investment. It's a little bit pricey. Um, there are other, other options out there as well on these kind of things, but I've quite liked it in terms of uh, what it can do and how quickly it can do it. And it's just something that just works really, really well. And I've had no issues with it, so that's great. Another thing with it as well is you can sort of check things on your phone app as well so you can connect it to, to whatever's on this hard drive through the the phone app and actually see you know your clips and your footage it doesn't always play back that smoothly or that well but it for just being able to check that you made sure you've transferred everything across it will give you that option at least and also it will give you the option to then go in and um, start to rename folders and stuff as well which can help you with later on when you do get back into your editing suite um, having everything renamed and located in the right area that's that's fantastic so with regards to the drone that i was using i was using the mavic air but i no longer have it and um, just wanted to say a couple of things about it though i did really like the image quality out of it it was really good 4k um, up to 30 frames per second and 100 megabits per second so the image quality is really good and I just loved the size and the portability of it. That was obviously one of the main things. It could just fit into any bag so easily. It was just so small and light. So a couple of things that I didn't really like about the Mavic Air, one being the amount of noise that came out of it in terms of the buzz of the propellers. I noticed that there was more compared to the Mavic Pro that I used to have before. And also the second thing was the signal would cut out a lot sooner than say my Mavic Pro that I had before as well and probably the Mavic Pro 2 that's out now. Um, yeah, so basically the Wi-Fi signal would just cut out a lot quicker or start to lag if there was some obstructions in the way like trees and things like that. It wasn't as reliable. So that was one thing that I, I didn't really like. Um, on the whole, it was good. Um, if you'd fly it in general, clear sight of view. So yeah, like I said, I don't have it anymore, but obviously there's a new announcement i think it was yesterday um of the mavic air 2 that's just been announced so that'll be something that i'll definitely look into and um obviously there's the great option of the mavic pro 2 which is a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier but the quality out of that is amazing so those are probably be the two options that i might go for next there you go with that being said guys that is everything that i am taking with me when i do my travel filmmaking it's a fairly small light bag that i do take with me which is what i prefer and um that is everything that I wanted to share with you today. If you made it this far into the video, then uh, thank you very much. You are hardcore and I appreciate you massively. And uh, if you did have any questions or you just wanted to have a little discussion down in the comments, then uh, feel free to do so. And obviously I'll be there answering any questions that you have. Chuck a like on the video if you did like it or it did help you out in any way. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this in the future and I shall see you in the next video. Take care.